Hey, uh, I'm curious about your team here. You um, have a squad that hasn't played in very many close games, just uh, uh, four decided by uh, 10 points or less. When you have that situation, how do you, just for lack of a better word, how do you teach them how to win? How do you teach them how to win close games? Well, we kind of, re we, you know, we'll go through a reenactment of the end, you know, the, the Montana game, we, you know, we missed some foul shots, which can happen. And, and then they made two, three. So there's, you know, both sides of the ball, offensive and defensive execution, um, Oregon three. Um, in this last game, you know, it just, we, we just got to close it. We've got to focus, you know, and then it goes back to execution. And sometimes, sometimes we lose our focus, goes in and out. I thought the UCLA game was the most consistent that we've been in a 40 minute game of executing and then managing runs um, and coming back and executing. Um, but that's the only way you can um, is teaching them, you know, you can't turn it over. You got to make foul shots and then you got to be able to get stops. And that goes back to executing our defense and, you know, you practice it, you simulate it, and then you hope that when they are out there that they can focus and we can remind them and then they can execute better. And then just uh, to fast forward a, a bit to Colorado, or I guess to maybe look back at that last game, um, last time you played them, that game got out of hand real quick after, after 10 minutes, I believe you guys were down 20. Yeah. Just um, anything that the, the things that you could take from that game that'll help you on Wednesday. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously being ready to battle from the first, um, like we did at UCLA, they, they tried to hit it. They hit us first and we didn't stop them. Um, you know, now the good thing on the offensive end is we're making shots. I think that's a big part of, of starting well is, is, you know, our offenses, we're moving the ball a little bit better, um, but guys are making shots and that, that changes things. And, um, I think the combination, like I said, I'm going to go back and reference the UCLA game because it was just more of the 40 minutes throughout the 40 minutes of consistency. And that was a great sign. And we're going to have to do that because Colorado is really, really good. They're really physical. Um, and we're going to have to, you know, be able to handle that. And I think we've made some adjustments defensively that can help us uh, in our last game, but they've got a high level shooting team. They got the number one free throw shooting team in the country. They've got a veteran team. They've got an all league, uh, all American type point guard. They've got size and they've got shooting and they've, they've got obviously a really good coach. So um, it's going to be a heck of a challenge for us, for sure. All right, Hop. Thank, thank you for your time. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, of course. Lauren, go ahead, Lauren. Hi, Hop. How are you? Good, Lauren. How are you? Good. Um, you mentioned those adjustments defensively and you said you kind of put those in in the day before the UCLA game. Do you expect now that you've had more time to work on them to kind of see more of an impact? I think so. We just try to simplify things for the guys and uh, where we were. Things ever, uh, you know, um, foolproof, but we're, you know, I, I thought the guys after yesterday really embraced it and, uh, you know, it was better. It was better for sure. Or we saw an improvement in practice. Um, but again, you know, in the, in the live, in the arena against the top team, now we, you know, we'll see what happens. And then looking back, I mean, the first half against UCLA was probably one of the better defensive performances you guys have had. What did you like? What did you see um, in that first half? We were talking. Uh, we were really, really executing. Uh, we rebounded the ball. We were only negative one in the first half. That was a huge part of the game. And then we made shots offensively, but the biggest thing was, is, is, you know, we, we, we were doing really good defensively. A couple of our breakdowns, they got three pointers off of uh, offensive rebounds and then one breakdown. But for the most part, we rebounded well. Uh, we held them to one shot and then we were able to make shots on the offense of them. The second half was a different story, but against a great team like UCLA, you knew they were going to come out strong and we just, you know, we were negative 10 rebounds in the second half. That's a, moving forward, be a big, huge part of this thing moving forward. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Chris Petter, Chris. Hey, Hop. Um, I just was curious, um, first of all, is Nate Pryor going to be available for tomorrow? Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and also just, just a general question, you know, obviously you've broken down the film of the USC and UCLA games. We got your gut reactions, obviously, post game on both those. But now that you've had a chance to really digest them, what did you see against UCLA that you really feel 
were kind of moments where the where the flip where the switch really flipped and, and you I, were able I, to you we, know we, that that's what we, you got going forward. We we tried to simplify Chris even offensively. You know, we just tried to simplify and and we were more poised and patient. We didn't take quick, as quick a shots as we've had in the past. We waited for better shots. That's important. Yeah, that's a big important thing. And that's when I think the guys feel comfortable. We had good spacing, guys screened for each other better. Uh, and then making shots is obviously a huge thing. Um, but for the most part, um, you know, I was really, really proud of the way that they've improved offensively. They put a lot of work into their shooting and you can see the result of that. And uh, obviously we still have a long way to go, but uh, you know, there's good signs, but I think the poise part of it and the patience part of it on the offensive end has been huge. And also defensively, we, we've touched on takeaways. Um, do you feel like just, is that, is that a byproduct of as you guys get better and there's more communication and that kind of thing, or are there specific things that you have to drill and really hammer home with these guys uh, as they continue to grow in it? Well, obviously, you know, playing with energy, um, active hands, that's where you get deflections, understanding uh, where you're supposed to be, you know, just like in good man to man, good, any defense, you defend the ball and the team defends the ball, not just one player. And, uh, and, you know, that's a huge part of it is just being in the right position. And so, you know, Matisse Thibel, he had the right position, but then he also could run a four two forty, and, 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 and has a seven foot wingspan. So there's some physical attributes to that too. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of it is position and effort and then obviously execution. Thanks. Hop. You're welcome. Hey hop. Thanks for the time. Yes, Andy. Um, so, you know, Riley Soren, uh, kind of stepped up big in that last game, especially when Nate got into some foul trouble. Um, what in your perfect world would Riley Soren's role look like night to night? You know, to be honest with you, it's all about his energy. When he has energy, he's a different player. And when he doesn't, you know, he doesn't help us to the level. And that's really for anybody, but especially Riley. He's a big dude, you know, getting up and down the court. Um, but he is getting better. He's getting more confident. The guys are confident in him. He's understanding the zone better. Uh, and, uh, you know, we expect that now. Now it becomes the consistency part, right, of knowing what you're going to get night in and night out. But um, – He's been a heck of a player for us. Definitely, definitely. Um, and then, uh, you know, Jamal Bay and Eric Stevenson's uh, three-point shooting looked uh, miles ahead of where they may, may have been at the beginning of the season. You know, uh, what can you guys do to facilitate that and keep them going uh, this weekend? Just keep playing them. They're, they're great players. And even if they miss a couple, they got to keep shooting, especially just good shots. You know, we're, we're getting better shots. Uh, we're getting more shots in rhythm and, they're just playing confident and um, you know, that's, that's a big part of this. And they just, they're hard workers. They work on their game consistently. They're always in the gym. Whenever I walk by, they're, they're always shooting, they're always working and, and uh, you're starting to see the result, which I'm really, really happy for them and happy for the team and proud of them. Thanks. Hop. Thank you. So Maz, go ahead. Hey Hop, how you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Hey, not too bad. Hey, on a team that's learning how to win, you talked about patience and poise. I'm just wondering how much discipline and good decision making is being stressed as well as part of that package. Well, it is, but that's what happens with poise. When you play really good defensive teams or good teams in general, when you have the lead, they just start trying to amp up their defense. They try to overplay. They might trap. They might do a lot of different things because they're trying to create turnovers and more possessions. And that's where our poise and execution and not panic has to come in. And, um, you know, that's that's just a big part of it. And that goes back into when, when you're not that, you probably make rush decisions. You turn it over. That's They try to speed you up, play faster than you normally play. And so, yeah, that's an all is a byproduct of the poise piece for sure. And there's no fans, but there's something to be said about you all coming back home and shooting on a familiar rim and getting ready for a big game. I wonder if you can just talk about that. Just being at home is a great thing. Sleeping in your own bed, getting in your gym that you shoot every day. Um, that's a, it's a big part of it. And uh, obviously we wish our fans were here because it just gives us a, a different type of boost. The dog pack, our fans are just incredible. Miss them, obviously. But 
you know, it's, uh, it's good to be home and um, we're looking forward to, to getting that opportunity tomorrow night against Colorado. Thank you. All right, Tim Grinnells, go ahead, Tim. Hey coach, um, the UCLA game, uh, towards the end of the game, it appeared that they punched you in the mouth a couple of times, punched you in the nose, but you guys didn't back down. They came back and, and punched back. How big of a deal was that from what you saw and looking at the game film and how big is that? Just shows you that you're growing and you're getting resilient. You're becoming, you know, we've come back in a lot of games, but we had the lead here. They took it and then we took it back and we were, you know, just like in every, any heavyweight championship fight, right? You're, 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 there's, you know, there's going to be runs. It's a game of runs. It just goes back to, you know, how can you execute in the last three minutes? You know, we had a, a bobbled ball that ended up in two points. We had an offensive foul that ended up and, you know, go on the other end. And, you know, there's a few of those plays that just can't happen when you're, you're, you're in winning time in those last four minutes. And, and uh, we'll learn from it. We'll grow from it. These experiences are invaluable and um, you know, uh, We'll simulate it, and then they've got to be able to go out and execute it, and they're getting better at it for sure. And just one more, just rebounding. I mean, just the extra possessions the other teams are getting on rebounding. How much of that's want to? How much of it's effort? How much of it's talent? And what can you do to get better on that? Well, I, you know what? It's, uh, Ken, it's a great question. I think the adjustment that we're making, and again, it goes back to execution, but the adjustment that we're making will, should help that. And then it goes back to that. There's a gritty part of that for sure. You know, it's a mindset. But now we're, I, we, we feel that we'll be in better position to be able to defense or rebound better for sure. Uh, and uh, that will be a big part of it. But grit and toughness, those types of things, and, and, and want to are all stuff that we, we preach every day. And it's, you know, now you just got to be able to go out and execute it. But, you know, the first half, they got one of the best offense rebounding teams. We were negative one, which was great. We held them to 29 points. Second half, you know, it needed to, instead of 10, it needed to be five. You know, it needed to be five. Um, and so rebounding, obviously, moving forward, especially tomorrow, will be huge.